Boom! What's going on everyone? This is Steve Larson and this is Sales Funnel Radio. Today we are going to talk about my content machine and how I'm pulling it off. I've spent the last four years learning from the most brilliant marketers today. And now I've left my nine to five to take the plunge and build my million dollar business. The real question is, how will I do it without VC funding or debt completely from scratch? This podcast is here to give you the answer. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply, and share marketing strategies to grow my online business using only today's best internet sales funnels. My name is Steve Larson, and welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. What's up, guys? Hey, I am excited to share this with you. Uh, You know, when I first started listening to gurus on the internet, when I first started consuming their content, when I first started going through and reading it, I had this, I was grateful for the content, but I don't know if you're like me, like, I I did not ever want to do any kind of publishing ever, ever. Like, I remember when I first went to my, it was the very first Funnel Hacking Live I went to, it was 2016, and I remember this this very clear, this very clear, um, and I think I might have shared this with you before, but I remember I was I was literally biking around the bay at San Diego because what cash we had I didn't want to spend on a a cab so I rented a bike and I was biking around and I lent, and I remember thinking to myself I will do whatever this man tells me to do except I will not publish and that was like my actual active thought and I know I've shared that with you guys before but this is kind of what happened right fast forward a week and I'm working next to Russell Brunson and this is what I see him doing okay he's sitting there and he's going he's on camera and he's going what's up guys this is Russell Brunson and then he's over on his podcast what's up guys this is Russell Brunson right and then he's over on his blog what's up guys this is Russell Brunson right and I was like there's something to this this is really interesting and um, yeah, funny enough that very first uh, day at Funnel Hacking Live right he said Everyone needs to start publishing. And I was like, there's no way. I'm not going to do it. I will build the funnels. I'll do whatever you want me to do, Russell. Um, my life's already changed. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. But I will never, ever, Mr. Russell Brunson, ever be one of those podcasters. And that was my that was my thought. Well, what's up? How you doing? I'm podcasting. <laughs> and uh, we've crossed over 160,000 downloads, which is awesome, uh, uh, between the two shows that I have. And that's awesome. Anyway, it's gone really, really well. I remember, though, <clears throat> after watching Russell like publish and and we didn't do anything unless there's a camera around a lot of times right and we would go grab a camera we'd go grab right we one day uh it was like 4 a.m and he voxed me and he goes dude i got this sick idea man hey swing on into the office uh as soon as you can i'm really really pumped about this i'm gonna make you famous i was like what does that mean and then he goes dude we're gonna start a reality tv show man and that's when we started funnel hacker tv and he goes he goes um uh um anyway we so we we had the show right there's like visual show, and then we had podcasts where people could listen, and then there were blogs where people could read, and there was like, it is dominating everywhere. I mean, be completely honest with you, can you consume all of the content that ClickFunnels puts out? No, nobody can, and that's not the point, right? He's trying to dominate the conversation. Well, I remember about uh, six weeks into working there, I found was like, I need to get a handle on this whole uh, content creation thing. I have to. There's no way I can do this without actually being... Um, Anyway, there's something to it, and I know I'm gonna suck at first. Like I'm gonna be terrible. I'm gonna be awful, and I did. I was awful. I was I was super bad. I actually really was not good. Like, if you guys go listen to the first few episodes of of, of uh, Sales Funnel Radio, like, they're good. The content is good. What I'm talking about is great, but the delivery is like terrible, and I know that. And when I came to grips with the fact that that's the way it was gonna be, and I just need to gut it out a little bit, I just started moving forward. And when I first started doing it, I was the only person in my content team, okay? It was one of the things I was watching from a lot of these major entrepreneurs. Like, they were never the only one doing their content. They had a content team. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can, first of all, I'm not gonna be able to afford something like that after I figured out how much they were all getting paid, right? And then, like, I was like, how do you even put a team like that together? So anyways, what I wanna do real quick, just fast this episode, I, the whole point of this episode is I wanna show with you guys kind of the journey through my content team, because now I have the team, right? It did not start that way though, and I wanna tell you guys just real fast, like when I started, I was just using Libsyn, that's liberatedsyndication.com, libsyn.com, it's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com, it's amazing, okay? It was like five bucks a month for me to start, and what it allowed me to do was, I was like, well, I wanna be able to push out on iTunes, obviously, but I also wanna go through and, yeah, I really like, a lot of people want to read, you know, right? And I, I don't want to write a blog, though. I'm not going to write a blog. I like writing about this kind of stuff, but I'm not going to take the time to write a blog for every podcast episode. So what I did was I ripped the audio, and it gets transcribed at rev.com. 
right? I take that transcription and that becomes the blog post, right? So I have, right, an actual blog that every episode's been going on and, uh, and that's all I did. I just took the transcription, I put it on the actual blog, I pressed go, on, it was on WordPress, right? I, I, I believe in using tools for the intent they were created, right? ClickFunnels is not meant to be a blogging platform, so I don't blog on it. I use WordPress because WordPress was built to be a blogging platform. Right? Some people do some weird things with it and turn it into a sales platform, but it's not a sales funnel. They turn it into a website. So I don't use WordPress to sell things. I use WordPress to publish things. Does that make sense? Any, any platform that way, like you could make a lot of things turn into a lot of other things with you know, weird connections and back and stuff. Like I just don't, anyway. It's kind of like when you go to a, uh, a restaurant, like if you go to uh, you know, a restaurant, like a sushi place and you order a hamburger, like I'm sure they could make it for you, but it's like, but that's not our thing. You know what I mean? It's the same way I look at software. Um, I, whatever the software was intended to do, that's what I go for it only and use it just for that, okay? And that's why I still use several different platforms and I'll tie them together. ClickFunnels is built to sell crap, so I use it to sell my crap, okay? <laughs> so that's what I've been doing though. Um, so when I first started out, it was just me. And I would go and it would took me about two hours per episode after I did the episode, <laughs> right? To actually get it out the door. And what I would do is I would, I would record it. I would wake up at about 5 a.m. I'd be at ClickFunnels HQ at about 6 a.m. And I would take Russell's microphone and I would grab his mic because I didn't have money to go get a microphone at that time. Right? I was just learning about all this stuff too, right? It's, the mic's right there, okay? Um, uh, a different mic now, <laughs> okay, but I would take, I would unplug the microphone from his computer and I'd go over, just turn around and plug it into mine, right, and, uh, and I'd record the episode because I know his mic was good, and I was like, well, crap, I gotta, I gotta figure out how to use Adobe Audition or some kind of software for editing or something like that. I went through and I created my intros and out. I make all my intros and outros, by the way. I really like doing it. I've been a sound junkie and editor since I was like 12, and I would make a lot of music on a lot of different platforms. Um, and uh, just, I mean, I spent a lot of Saturdays just making music, and it was a bunch of fun. So I do my own. I did my own sound editing, and I would go and grab, uh, you know, from Fiverr. I'd have somebody do a voiceover. The way I wrote my intro, just so you guys know, is I went and I, I actually listened to all the top po rated podcasts in the business category on iTunes. And I listened to all their intros and I transcribed them and I found all the different, like I found the things, all the similarities and I made sure I grabbed some of those and then threw a few of the things in there as well. That's how I made my intro for the original Sales Funnel Radio intro. Um, I went to premiumbeat.com um, and downloaded a cool song I like had a voiceover guy from Fiverr just say it and then I just put them together and that's how I made my intro and, and outro. Um, and then I was like, hey, how cool would it be? Um, right now that I got the intro, I got the outro, I'm doing the podcast, I'm ripping the audio. Um, I, guys, I freaking bootstrap. Okay, that's the whole point. Before I was even at ClickFunnels, when I started putting together videos, I was like, where, where are, I don't have sound, or I don't have video editing software. Who does? I was like, libraries. So I did all my video editing in libraries for like a year before ever graduating and working at ClickFunnels, okay? Um, I was like, who has a camera? I don't have a camera. Libraries, and I went back to libraries and I would rent their cameras and I'd go, entrepreneurs would hire me to get on planes and fly over and film their events and film them doing sales videos and then I'd go back and edit them in libraries and give the camera back that I didn't own and I would edit it in libraries and I would take those videos and put them up on the funnels that I was building, which I was just hacking from what Russell and other successful people were doing, okay? The, the whole way was bootstrapping, all of it's been bootstrapping, okay? And it's actually super fun, <laughs> okay? My content has been no different. I bootstrapped it, okay? I didn't have a mic, so I just borrowed one, <laughs> okay? Really early in the morning. That's like how I did the first 50 episodes of Sales Funnel Radio, okay? I grabbed Russell's mic and I got there way before everyone else, so I was completely alone in the office. Um, and then I would go and um, my job required that I had the Adobe suite because I used Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. Well, what came with it was Adobe Audition. So I, it came with it. So that's what I did all my sound editing on. I didn't know what settings to put. So I went to YouTube and I Googled what sound editing sound great on a podcast. I don't know what they mean. I have no idea what all those letters mean on the sound editing stuff. I just took them, I pasted them in and it's one of the reasons that my podcast sounds so good today and so many of you have complimented me on that. Okay. I don't know what they mean. I know it does really awesome stuff when I push the button and those settings get applied. Okay. Um, that's how I did it though. I've literally bootstrapped the entire way. The obstacle is the way, okay? Just follow your questions and the answer's on the other side usually. So that's what I did for a while. And I did it, I, I was the producer and the recorder and the attractive character and the content creator for my own for like the first probably 40 episodes. 
right? And it took about two hours per episode to take it, trans you know, get it the, the transcription put into WordPress, make it look amazing, right? Then I'd go in Libsyn and press uh, the publish button and it would blast to like 16 different platforms. Boosh. I hate Twitter. I don't know why it's there, but I push there because people listen, right? I... <laughs> Um, and I did, but I did it for a lot of different platforms. Push to YouTube, push to Facebook, push to the blog, push to iTunes, obviously. Like, um, iHeartRadio, Spotify, right? Push all over the place. I wasn't doing that. Libsyn was. And uh, it really helped my time. Around episode 40, I went and I, I hired my first VA. And uh, it was my sister. A lot of you guys know who she is. And... Um, um, she, she was finally, in, she was in a position where she was interested in this kind of stuff and said, look, I'll train you how to do it all. Um, here's how, here's what I'm doing exactly. Right. So I taught her to go grab, right. Um, I would get it transcribed and then I would just hand off the transcription and the episode and she would do everything else. She put it in WordPress. She put all like, she did everything. Okay. She put it in WordPress. She did SEO optimization on it with some cool plugins we had. She did, um, uh, anyway, she, anyway. So super cool, right? And that's what I did for, for quite a while from like episode 40 up until like episode 140, okay? In the last few episodes, what I've been doing, and I'm just going through this so you guys see the content journey. And the reason why I'm going through it is because those of you who went to Funnel Hacking Live and you saw Pang Jun do his presentation about how he does his content, I think people think that they need to start with this gigantic content machine, right? I gotta go have this crazy, like, let's go get all these people together, blah, blah, blah. Like, I never started with that, right? Never, right? And number one, because of the cost, right? I'm spending $26,000 in hard costs a month right now on my content generation process. My content machine cost me that much, okay? But I would never have started that, <laughs> right? I never would have started that way, right? There's no way, that's, that's dumb, right? But I knew content was important. If I could just, if I could speak, if I could get my voice more out there, what I was learning as I was watching these gurus, right? What I was, as I could document my journey, which I'm still doing, you guys are watching me do it all the time, right? But if I could just do that, I know that whoever controls content in an industry controls the industry. Okay, if no one is hearing you speak, no one knows you exist in your industry. Okay, the numbers are very tiny. So regardless if they're buying from you, it, that's why this whole content thing is so important and so powerful. If no one knows you're talking, you don't exist. Okay, uh, there was a, there was a, um, um, and I'm gonna tell you how I've blown it up now and what the actual process is now. But there was a, one of my first mentors was the CMO of, of Denny's and also Pizza Hut. Um, I spent a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with him. He was actually a professor of mine, and uh, he and I got a, a friendship, and I actually would ask him a lot of questions, and I talked a lot with him. He invented stuffed crust pizza. Whoa, right? <laughs> yeah, he's the man. And, uh, and, and I remember I was sitting in his office with him once, and I was talking with him. And uh, at the time, we were in this, this semester of college where we don't do anything but run a business. That's it, you start a business from scratch, they give you virtually no help. <laughs> um, you started. Well, I was voted to be the CEO, uh, the first CEO of this of this company. We ended up making two to three grand a week um, during that semester, which is awesome. And uh, with with no help, we built it up, and it was awesome. And I remember though, I was talking about marketing with him, and it was at a time in my life where I had not yet totally decided to go into just marketing alone. I was still, I was like, man, should I go do supply chain? Like, should I, should I go do finance? Should I go do this? Should I go do that? And he and he and I were chatting, and I was like, I feel like I'm. I was like, I feel like I'm yelling at people about our company. Like I'm yelling, I'm like, hey, we're here, we're here, come buy our thing. And he's like, you know what's funny about marketing? He said, the moment that you feel like you are being annoying is the moment that people even are just starting to realize you even exist, okay? You're gonna get tired of your message, you're gonna get tired of your stories way before the market will, okay? Far before. You're, you are not yelling as loud as you might think you are. You're not, okay? Like this content that I'm pushing around all over the place, and that's what I wanna talk about real quick, how I've evolved this thing and put it in different places now. Um, it's interesting to see the journey that it's taken, right? Whoever controls content controls beliefs and ideas. But also, if you're barely talking, or if you're not even talking, like people just don't even know you exist for the longest time, they really don't. You're gonna have the core people who follow you, who love you, who do the crazy, thing, who are the fanatics over what your business does. But most people don't really know you that well. They know of maybe your podcast, or they know maybe of your business. They know maybe of, they don't know what it is. It just feels like you're yelling at them because to you, it feels like you're yelling. You're not, okay? So get used to speaking or at least communicating in some way. If you don't wanna do a podcast, don't, okay? If you wanna do video, sweet. If you wanna just blog, awesome. Neil Patel blew up that way, right? 
whatever medium you're comfortable doing most frequently, just marry it, okay? Marry it, right? We just did the episode a little bit ago about the attractive character. It is the vehicle for your attractive character to explode on, okay? That's why it's so important for you to do this stuff. Anyway, so what I started realizing is when I, when I left ClickFunnels, right? And I left and I, and I was standing, I remember, I remember at Funnel Hacking Live feeling like, I mean, my content machine was still good. It was just me, right? And I'd hand it off and that was kind of it. But I realized that I could do a lot more and I had the backing to do it. And I was like, you know what? Worked my butt off, got a lot of, I was like, I'm gonna go try and blow up some of these platforms a little bit better. I love YouTube, okay? Facebook and I, we still have a love-hate relationship, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I use it, okay? Um, Instagram, loving it, okay? When Russell stood up, so if you didn't, if you guys weren't at Funnel King Live, he stood up and he said, at one of his, this is like his first presentation, he stood up and he goes, where's Steven? And I was like, woo, because that's what I do, I yell. And uh, he's like, there he is. Steven's one of my favorite people on the planet, but he does not know what's on Instagram. He does not ever get on it. So I gotta make sure I hit all his different platforms. Then he proceeded to pseudo make fun of me. Uh, I know you're watching, man. <laughs> okay, he proceeded to pseudo make fun of me for not using Instagram. I felt the stance of shame. Here's the stance of shame. <laughs> That's the stance of shame. And what I decided to do was the very next day during a lunch break in Funnel Hacking Live, um, Colton and I went over to an Apple store and we grabbed myself an iPhone, a new one, and I have been Instagramming my face off and it's been awesome. And I started putting these different pieces together and I saw Peng June talk about how he does his content machine. I was like, you know what? With a few tweaks, I'm actually close to what he's doing. And so that's what I've been, that's part of the reason why some of my other businesses slowed down just a little bit, because my focus has been on this content machine. Setting up systems, setting up the business, getting my processes in place, which has been amazing. We've got the ads, ads small on my main product, but we're still very profitable. And uh, building up these con this content machine and the business so that like we have this crazy accelerant now, guys. We have this insane power. And uh, it's been really, really cool. So. Here is my new content machine. I'm not gonna name names because they're my people and it took me a while to find them and I'm spending a lot of money to get them. <laughs> so just let me know, I'm gonna let you know what the roles are. Okay, these are the roles that I filled and I really wanted to go hit, okay? If you read Dotcom Secrets, these books are never really that far from me. Here they are. <laughs> if you read Dotcom Secrets, one of the things that Dotcom Secrets talks about very early on is it talks about this whole concept of um, old media versus new media, okay? And uh, old media versus new media, right? Old media, if you think about old media, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it here real fast while I'm just on here. I don't wanna spend long. But, uh, right, old media, right, that's things like newspapers, right, a lot of direct mail, right, the radio. And it's not that that's not still consumed, it's just that there's all these new media that you also need to be cognizant of and speak on, right? And so, I know it's towards the beginning of the book. Anyway, I don't know if I'll find it while I'm on camera and podcast with you guys, so maybe I won't keep going here. But anyways, what's interesting about the new media versus the old media, right, Right, what is the new radio, podcasts? What is the new TV, kind of YouTube, right? What's the new, YouTube and, and Facebook Lives, things like that. What's the new, um, right, what's the new uh, newspaper, right? Blogs, right? And what's cool is you go study guys like Ryan Holiday who's obsessed with the ideas of content creation and he's very, very good at it, very good at placing ideas in places, right? If you go look at what he's doing, um, He's just using different media sources against them against itself, right? It's really anyway, really really fascinating. Okay, so what I did is I said I want to be on YouTube, I want to be on blogs, I want to be on Instagram, I want to be on Facebook groups, I want to be on right. And I started thinking through all these different ways that um, I wanted to be on, um, even though that's not the format I was going to publish on. Okay. I was like, well, that, that causes a really interesting scenario because you need to match the content to the platform, right? Each platform has a context. You don't go on podcasts and listen to these podcasts typically while just standing in a room. You know, usually you're doing something else. So on podcasters, I know I'm usually talking to like uh, active individuals who are running around, they're getting something else done typically. If Facebook, I, I wanna get on Facebook, but what's the intent of Facebook? People go on Facebook to get distracted usually. Right? So I gotta make sure that it's somewhat entertaining when my same content piece hits that platform. Right? People get on YouTube to either get distracted, entertained, or it's like a how-to video, right? It's a lot of that kind of stuff. Right? It's slightly more instructional. 
than, than Facebook's intent, usually, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm talking stereotypes here, okay? Why do people read blogs? Right? There's not tons of story usually in blogs. I know it depends. Like in the space that I'm in, there's usually not tons of story. It's usually a lot of how-to stuff, right? A lot of, um, um, anyway, stuff like that. And so I was like, well, so that became the challenge. Like, well, how do I just do a podcast and then repurpose the content for the content's sake, and the, but also for the platform's context, right? And so that's what I've been building and putting together. And I, and I, I believe that questions invite revelation. So that's been the question on my mind, right? And how do I solve that problem? And cool enough, I've solved it. Okay, that's what happens when you ask the right questions. Okay, it's not a questions aren't threatening. It's 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 the right question that that becomes threatening. You'll answer the question no matter what you're asking. If it's like, oh, why am I broke? You'll get the answer. Instead, figure out how can I make more money, and you'll start finding that answer. Is that funny? It's a total side note and rabbit. <laughs> okay, here's my content machine. Okay, the first thing I do is I have a video podcast now. Right, I primarily do this on a video camera. This is the same camera type that we use for Funnel Hacker. Uh, TV that Russell uses and I like it and um, it's big though and so what I do is meaning the camera file is big the camera itself is small it's a 4k camera okay so I film these things and by the time this episode's over it's gonna probably be like 10 gigs no joke and I'm gonna go rip the audio from it and I go and I send the audio along with my intro and my outros. All that stuff is already in another person's hands. And he goes through and he's the man. He goes through and he grabs my, my, um, uh, my main episode audio file and whatever outro I said I want on it and the intro. And he puts on those settings that I like, the settings that my show is all in, right? He puts all those settings in there. And then he goes through right? He, he, he matches the volume loudness. If you guys ever wondered why, like my intro, my outro, they all sound the same volume about this as like the actual episode. It's because of some cool things he does in the background with post editing that I've been doing. I was like, well, I got to remove myself from this process. Let's remove myself from the team here. So he goes through and he does a whole bunch of cool sound editing and he re uploads it to our Google drive folder that we use as a team. Then the Trello card, yes, we're using Trello to track this gets assigned to the next person, right? And that person goes out and does a crazy amazing things on YouTube with it. They take the video that's being recorded right now, they go through and they figure out all these, she's amazing. She figures out uh, really cool ways that I should be competing with different keywords on SEO to rank me in YouTube. And then has me go, you know, and then she goes through and creates these really cool, she takes 15 second clips of neat things that I said and takes them out. And that's what gets passed in to our assets folder again for future use for Instagram, right? She creates a thumbnail video. She does a whole bunch of other stuff. She's absolutely amazing. The card then gets passed off to my incredible uh, blog writer, right? And she comes in and she goes and she grabs um, the actual transcription from Rev when it comes in. She goes and she writes this blog post. So it's no longer just a transcription. She actually takes this which is funny because you guys are only reading this right now and watching this. You guys know what I'm doing with this after I press, after I stop recording, this is what's gonna happen to it, okay? And it's all this machine that we've created, okay? With these amazing, brilliant, specialized people. They're not cheap, they're incredible, okay? I wanted good people. And I found out a lot of them have their own agencies behind them too, which is another reason why they're so good. I mean, they're, and they're not, like, it's amazing, okay? It's, amazing. it's taken me a long time. Don't feel like you have to do this though as you start out. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, this is something you get to eventually. You can graduate to this kind of spot eventually. And it'll keep blowing up from here. I'm sure we'll keep adding processes and cool things to it, but this is the core of what it is. So anyways, right, she takes, uh, the, right, the next person goes in after YouTube, my blog writer writes an actual blog post. So it's no longer just the transcription. She actually puts together an actually really cool blog post and writes it, uploads it back to our assets folder just for that episode on Google Drive. Then the next person goes in and she takes it and she goes in and she actually goes into WordPress and puts it in WordPress and makes it awesome, right? We're doing this, we're gonna do a massive overhaul of the uh, blog that's actually associated with this. We're gonna do a massive overhaul of the look, the feel, the layout, everything in it. So it's it's uh, cleaner, it's neater, everything's, anyway, so she goes in and she makes it look visually amazing inside of the actual, um, anyway, so we've only, this is like the second or third episode that we've actually launched doing this process, really cool. Anyway. Then the next person goes in, right? And goes in and what he does is he actually takes everything and he launches it on Libsyn and does all the cool checks and all the things that go inside there so it blasts out to tons of platforms at one time, right? Then the next person comes in and he goes in and puts it up on Instagram, on Facebook groups. He puts it on, um, I think he does a Twitter blast. He does a chat bot blast. He, I mean, it, it's nuts, guys, okay? It's nuts. That whole team, that whole process, what's cool about it is the deadline for the episode is all the exact same for every 
platform. So everyone schedules that publish to happen at the exact same time. So at the exact, at the exact same time about, you know, give or take maybe a few seconds, <laughs> all this content is hitting the internet at the same time. Boom, from different platforms, very, you know, same content repurposed towards the intent and context of that platform. And it gets passed down, passed down, passed down, passed down, passed down. Everyone's getting ready for it. So because of that, there's a, there's a, over a week lag time in the preparation for this. Okay. So I'll post it. And then there's a, usually about a week and a half to two weeks while everyone's doing their role and getting things ready for that spe spe uh, specific episode. And, uh, and, uh, anyways, it's freaking awesome. It's super cool. That's my content machine. And I call it a machine because the thing that I do, what I want to do is be able to go hit those platforms, find people, pay them what they want to get paid and what they're worth. They're, they're worth a lot of money. Okay. And you go out and you start putting those, those people together. It's pretty interesting what happens with it. But for the love, if you're just starting out, do not try to build that from the get go. I see too many people like running out and be like, I'm going to do the pain June thing that he was talking about. Like good, great. But like, be gentle with yourself, okay? Until you could put 26 grand out on a team, <laughs> right? Just for content's sake. I mean, right? I go through and I, uh, uh, right? It certainly, certainly pays me back more than that. Um, uh, but uh, that, anyways, that's what we're doing. So that's the content machine that I've got going on. I just want to give you guys an update with it. Episode 60 and 61 of this podcast to go through in depth on uh, how I put my actual content together for the podcast. And... Um, it, it dives more deeply through uh, some of the, my, my tech setup and the systems that I use as well. But it's been a while and a lot of you guys have asked me how I'm actually doing this still. And so that was episode 60 and 61. They're great ones to listen to if you are trying to build your own content machine, whether it's blog or podcast or video, whatever. Um, uh, but then I wanted to come through and actually show you kind of the updated of what I've been doing here. So anyways, you guys are awesome. You're rock stars. Appreciate it. Uh, keep at it. Love if you please, please. I know I keep asking, but... Um, what I'm putting out here, a lot of people charge a lot of money for, and I do it for free a lot of times. I really, really, really would love, if you wouldn't mind, please go rate this podcast, review it on iTunes. Um, it proves to iTunes that I'm not a schmuck <laughs> and that this is all really good stuff. This is what I'm doing. This is what the big uh, other people that I've watched do as well. And uh, it's been fun for me to go through and document kind of my journey along the way. So I am uh, still calling my shot and I'm just telling you guys what I'm doing along the way so you can avoid pitfalls. So if that is worth anything, anything to you and you've gotten any value from this, please go to iTunes. Someone reached out to once and they said, I don't know how to leave a review in iTunes. Like really, go to uh, iTunes, open it up, type in Sales Funnel Radio, I will show up. When you click on the show, right at the top there, it says ratings and reviews. Click there and it'll say write a review. Click write a review. <laughs> and I appreciate that. So anyways, thank you so much. It does mean a lot to me. And uh, um, we'll, we'll keep showing other funnel builders and entrepreneurs who are starting out and, uh, and, and crushing it. Pitfalls to avoid. Little cool tactics along the way too. All right, guys. Thanks so much. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. Boom. Thanks for listening. Hey, please remember to write and subscribe. Hey, you want me to speak at your next event or mastermind? Let me know what I can share that would be most valuable by going to stevejlarson.com and book my time now.